everyone, you might not remember me, my name is Rosianna and I video vlogged once for this and said hey I'm going to do this weekly, but then life happened, as it sometimes does, basically I have a rundown of the films that I've seen recently and then hopefully after this I will get back on the ball onto regular video reviewing because I've really watched too many films. It's a disease. I can't help it. The fact that I list Gossip Girl among some of my favourite television programmes of all time may indicate a rather trashy inclination from time to time. And I watched three films, two of which definitely fall into the trashy stereotype, one of which sidles out of it perhaps because it was based on a book, which also you will know are by no means current titles. These are just things that I kept catching on television on, you know, late night repeats of films and stuff. And I was like, hey, I should finally watch these because obviously if they're showing them all the time, they must be high quality quality films. Uh, maybe not. A Not Like Love stars Ashton Kutcher and Amanda Peet. I basically watched it because Amanda Peet was in Studio 60 and I loved her character Jordan McDeer. I expected a bad film because it has Ashton Kutcher in it, but I kind of thought my love for Amanda Peet will make this film bearable. Haha, <laughs> little did I know. The two characters meet on a flight across the country and really meet on a plane. Oh, six months down the line, a year down the line, what's their relationship like? Blah blah blah. Could they possibly be destined for each other? Honestly, the whole time I kept thinking, no, you're just terrible for each other. Just go other directions, other directions. And then one of the big things, which is, you know, a little bit of a plot spoiler, but it's so predictable from the start that it's really not worth even calling it a plot spoiler. Ashton's character likes to take photographs, and then Amanda Peet tries to take pictures, and she turns out to be so much better than it and becomes her big career. But the whole thing is bound up in weird ideas of other people making the first move that feel a little bit like making guys make the first move, and making guys aspire to some strange male ideal that I just didn't like. And for a film that's supposed to be fun and trashy to watch the whole time, I was like, can I turn this off yet? But I didn't, so maybe I have only my Myself to blame. The second film was Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, which was adapted from a novel of the same name, and I know this film is particularly popular within nerd circles and nerd communities. I think Kat Dennings is wonderful, and I think Michael Cera is wonderful as well, so I mean, no complaints there on the casting, but the story was just really lacklustre. So while the time span of A Lot Like Love takes place over a span of years, including many horrible wigs, the time span for Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist is one night. Nick's a boy who's been dumped and is trying to wing his girlfriend back by making really obsessive mixed CDs, including voice recordings. Nora attends high school with a girl who's recently dumped her boyfriend and keeps throwing away these mix CDs that actually turn out to be really good mix CDs. By chance and coincidence and circumstance they end up running into each other and they also actually don't get along immediately. But again I feel like the film lacked urgency, it lacked excitement. It was kind of like it was a nice film to put on in the background rather than something like my favourite film Easy A which I'm always like this is an event. I'm going to watch this film, it's an event, everything else shuts down. Boom. I want films that are events, maybe that's too demanding and maybe this is just a different kind of film. And one reason why it's so good to put on in the background is because the music is amazing and the mixing is amazing. So I really love that aspect of it and, and for a film that is about a love of music, I think that came across really well. I thoroughly enjoyed the book so I feel like if anyone was disappointed by the film then maybe do try out the book. Though I did like how it wasn't really a patronising portrayal of teenagers, it was I think quite accurate and, and how teenagers often think that we're older. I say we, I'm actually older than teenagers now that's depressing. But how when you're in that situation you do feel like you're old and full and whole and capable, which you are, and people don't sometimes treat you like that. But I feel like the film wasn't from the perspective of an adult, it was from the perspective of a teenager, which was actually really refreshing. Film number three is a film I remember watching in the cinema, crying a lot over and then not watching for about five to seven years. And that's the film Raising Helen, which I think is the best of the three. The film has a lot of actors I don't traditionally love, as well as some actors I do love, like Hayden Panettiere when she was a lot younger, and Joan Cusack. But it's a story of three sisters, and when one of the sisters die, she leaves her children to the care of the youngest and least responsible sister. In a sense, the film is a mystery, and over the course of the film, you figure out why her sister chose to leave her children to the youngest rather than to the oldest who already had a family and was extremely mother capable. And so when you reach the climax of the film, you want the youngest sister to also realise why she was worth that choice. And you, you really feel like you're on her side, and I don't feel like in the other films I was really on anyone's side. And okay, maybe siding with someone isn't necessarily the point of amazing filmic storytelling, but it's the sound of a film that kind of gets to you somehow in a good way. And essentially I think Raising Helen did a really good job of telling the story it told, whilst adding a few cheesy romantic moments. It was comfortably predictable rather than skull crushingly predictable. The next film I'll be reviewing is Ito Mama Tambien and then maybe we'll sidle on to some television reviews. Who knows? Bye!